Hello, very good evening. In today's lecture, we will learn a very quick and easiest ways to understand how you can start working with PHP. We simply download a XAMPP server and we will install it, configure it, and then we will install work with PHP very quickly, very simply, very easily without going into too much first. This is a very basics and absolute beginner tutorials. So if you have done it for the first time, this should be very useful for you. My name is Dr. Sean Buddy, and if you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell icon so you receive the notifications of these tutorials regularly. Now let's begin. PHP is basically a very powerful and very commonly used backend language that allows us to develop a client server architecture based code. Okay. Now, in order to do that, first thing you need is you need to have something called a XAMPP server. So what we do is we go and search XAMPP download. Okay. As soon as you search XAMPP download, you will be presented with apachefriends.org download page. Okay. In order to use PHP, you need a server, you need a PHP, you need MySQL, you need these three things. Okay. And obviously you will not require to purchase a server. So what we do is we use something called XAMPP. XAMPP is basically a software that will emulate a server on your local machine and it automatically by default has something called PHP and MySQL. So all you need to do is download this and install this software. Once you download and install it, it is very easy and very simple to install. It will require you to install it in your C drive as a XAMPP folder. Once this folder is downloaded and installed, I will come into my C drive, go inside the XAMPP folder. Now this is folder that will be created once you install it. When you are here, you need to go into something called XAMPP control panel. If you double click on it, your XAMPP control panel will be enabled. Okay, so we go inside the XAMPP, we download the XAMPP, we install it. The downloading, of course, is simple. Installation is very simple, like any other software you need to do. No need to worry about anything else. Once you install it, you come back here, you will find that there's a folder called a XAMPP in your C drive. Go inside that XAMPP folder, now find this XAMPP control file. Once you start this file, you will be presented with this particular application. This is the control panel for your XAMPP server. Start the XAMPP Apache server, start the MySQL server. Now Apache is basically the server name that is required by your PHP. So PHP requires Apache server. XAMPP is a software that has XAMPP, that has Apache, that has a MySQL server, that has my PHP. Okay, so it's, it's like one software which has, which has three modules. XAMPP is basically a software. Apache is the actual server name that is required by PHP. Okay, so we need to start these both servers. So now it is started. It will tell you that server is started. This should be green. Everything is fine. Now what you need to do is you need to come into your browser, come here and write something called localhost. As soon as you write a localhost address, localhost is basically your name for your web page. Okay. Or L -O -O -L -M -S, local host. host. Okay. Localhost. That's it. Nothing else. Localhost is basically the URL for your server. Now, as we know, whenever we type a URL web address, it, it points to your particular server. Backend at every server, there is an IP address. In our case, it's 127.0.0.1. 127.0.01 is the local host IP address. So once we install the XAMPP, technically now my server behaves like a server and the address of this server is 127.0.0.1. If you don't want to remember this, we write local host. Same thing for Google. Google.com is basically our URL. And the backend of google.com, there is a particular IP that's mapped to the server of Google. So we don't need to write the IP address. We just remember need to remember the domain name. So we use the domain name to access the server. And that's exactly the same thing we do here. As soon as you use localhost, it will take you to a folder called dashboard and your XAMPP Apache settings is available. If this page comes, means your XAMPP is running fantastic, nothing else to worry. Now let's go back into our coding. So we come into brackets. Once we are here, we come inside the file new file new file is created now if i write html and backslash html this becomes my html code i can go and write the head tag backslash receives head and my body and backslash body okay so this becomes a typical html code that we have used millions of times i go inside and save this code However, when I save this code, now this is the trick lies. When we write HTML code, you can save it anywhere as .html. When you're working with PHP, do remember you need to come into your C drive. You need to go inside the XAMPP folder. Okay. And within the XAMPP folder, there's a folder called htdocs. This is very important. You need to save all your PHP code inside your XAMPP htdocs. This is equivalent to uploading a file on a server. Remember, every code that needs to be executed by a server needs to be uploaded on a server. 
and then the user can access the file from the server not from your local machine from the server however because my local machine currently behaves like a server on my zamp so we are basically uploading our source code on a zamp server by doing this by saving the file inside the zamp folder inside the ht docs folder now i have already multiple folders that i'm working on so i will create a folder uh, first first php okay so this becomes my folder or my project name inside this i will save this as index dot php now this is again another important thing save your file as php if you're working with html dot html is the extension if you're working with css dot css is the extension for external css however when you're working with php every php file needs to be saved as a dot php so index we know that is the default first file name for every project within that we have dot php extension we save it inside xamp htdocs and we created our own folder so now when i go on to the server i will type my folder name it will automatically point to my index folder so i save it so let's just give it a heading h1 first php code okay so up till now this is not php this is just standard html i just want to test it for now so i come back here i type localhost my dashboard comes but i don't want to go inside the dashboard so i delete the dashboard localhost f i r s t first php backslash this is the folder name not the file name the folder name so this folder name becomes my url on my localhost there's a folder here access it and my file gets executed as simple as that but this is not php code this is executing your file on a server this is how we execute our file on a server in order to do php we come inside the code ah here's my code here's my code now here basically we write our php code to write the php code we write these things so this is the php syntax okay the tag start question mark php oops question mark php this is the starting tag this is the closing tag everything we write in between is considered as a php code now we write here echo okay echo bracket start bracket close and then semicolon within this hello my first php code okay so now this is my exam php example i can just let me rename this so it doesn't confuse it um, php quick t u t o r i o r i s tutorial okay php quick tutorial and now i have written a php code echo statement and close the php code so the tag question mark php this indicates your php question mark bracket this indicates your php tag ending and then all the statement goes inside it we save this file now we come back into the browser we have this file control r just refresh the code and now php quick tutorial this is html this is an output of my php statement so now what we have done here is that we have written our first php code as simple as that the beauty of this is that you can write php code anywhere so for example i can write a paragraph tag within the paragraph tag i can say the output needs to be php based okay so i say echo well bracket start this is paragraph from php back semicolon and because we have started our php code we need to close it and we close it so within my paragraph tag i have written my php code we save it we come back into the browser control r this is the paragraph from php now this output has been generated from php this output has been generated from php and this is my php code so within my paragraph i have written my php code i can write only my php code as well so for example i can remove everything and just write the php that's also acceptable i can write my php within my html as well the advantage of this is that now php becomes dynamic this code is executed by the server what happens now is that we will connect this file with the database we will change the content of this based on the user and the database you know that's what the idea of client server is that a client is a user for example i want my request to be fed to the server and server wants to give me a specific answer so that specific answer is fed by the server so decision making the dynamic content actually comes inside here so i can use if else clause i can make decision based on the user i can read the data from the database 
and fetch. For example, again, Facebook. Once you log into your Facebook, every user gets his unique Facebook content. Every user gets his own wall based on the followers or based on the users he follow. Okay. So when I log into my Facebook, I have my content. So the basic template is same, but the data is constantly different for every single user in the world. How they do that? So they have a same HTML template, same content, but wherever there is a post, you will see, you will note that the post structure is again same, but the content changes. The content changes based on this PHP code. So whoever is the user, basically the content changes for that user. We, you do that using PHP. So by PHP, we make the decision who is the user, what's the database, who user is following, what's the new post. We take all these parameters, put in the database, fetch the query, process it and display it to the user using commands like echo. Now remember one other thing is that within this PHP, if I have PHP question mark and close, I use echo command right now. Within this echo command, I can also write, for example, paragraph tag. Hello paragraph and then I can close the paragraph here so I can echo back my HTML content within my uh, PHP as well I can use another echo and I can even create buttons tables whatever I want within this paragraph as well so I can use h2 okay uh, h2 and then I can say this is subheading backslash h2 and this is closed okay and I think let me remove that. So even within this S2, I can use style tag. Style is equals to single quotations. And I can say color becomes, for example, red. Okay, now here I've used single quotations because I've already initiated a double quotation mark. So if I use a double quotation, this will generate an error for me because the string hierarchy breaks. So if you need to use a quotation within a quotation, we use a quotation and then a single quotation marks here. So I've used the CSS style within the echo command which is inside the php completely allowed save it comes inside your browser hit a refresh now i get an html tag so heading to with a red color indicating this is my php so this is simply what we do within php code we write a php tag and then we embed it inside the html i can write this as a separate file as well so control c let me create a new file and write this php code here as well nothing else no html nothing i just wrote these two lines hello paragraph and these two lines here okay let me save it as uh, php file dot php okay or just rename this as file okay file dot php and again i need to upload it on a server to execute this file or uploading means saving it inside xamp inside htdocs inside my folder name which was php first php okay so i have my first php inside this i will save it as file.php or whatever name you want to give save it my file is saved now come back into browser now inside my first php i have something called file.php now note the url because i'm not using index in order to access any other file within this particular folder which is on this particular server so on this server i have a first php folder Within this folder, I have a file called PHP file. I press the URL, hello paragraph, the file is accessible. So you can write solely a PHP code that will execute your content. I can write an entire page inside the echo statements or I can write an HTML code and embed the PHP within it. Just save both files as .php. That's the key thing. And my PHP code is ready. Now what we do, we start learning within my PHP codes. We write variables, data types, if else conditions, programming the code, for accessing your database, function within PHP and so on and so forth. So the classes would extend. But this is the basic first tutorial how you can get start working with PHP. This is Dr. Sean Birdie. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you have stayed this far. See you long.